Hey what's up guys Daniel here, today I decided to shoot a quick video showing you how to use Golang Migrate Package. So first we'll look at what are migrations and then we'll dive into technical details. So welcome to Migrations 101. So what are migrations? Database migration is a management of incremental, reversible changes to relational database schemas. It's actually sounding fancy but it's just a bunch of files describing the alterations of the database. So why would you use it? Well, it is to be able to recreate your database from scratch, it makes it clear at what state your database is in at all times, and it gives you a way to manage your database version. So pretty cool. So if we go back to this Golang Migrate package, if you scroll down, you'll see that you can use either the CLI tool or the library version. Today we'll be using CLI version of that, and I'll explain you why. Also you can choose the database that you want to work with, we'll be working with PostgreSQL today. So let's scroll down a bit here and see, okay. So first, why would you actually use the CLI tool? Well first, if you want to do migrations manually, it's very nice to run a CLI command to do that. And why would you not want automatic migrations? Well, imagine you have like 100,000 users in your live database and then if you have automatic migrations, you can't really control them, can, cannot really manage them. And then, you know, you sometimes want to do a partial migration or something like that based on your code. And with automatic migrations, if it's done on deploy or something, it can mess things up. The second reason is, as you see, there's Docker usage that you can use to just run the migration command just by using the uh, image in the Docker Hub. You don't really have to install anything on your machine. Also, in my case, later on, I like to just make a separate image where I copy my migrations there, just make a volume, and then use the migration tool from there, not to overload any other container like backend, putting migrations there and running them. I like to have a you know, separation of concerns and just run it on a separate container. But if you want to use the library, you can dive into the documentation here. You can see that, yeah, you can create a new uh, kind of database here with a migration, or you can use the existing one, but you just refer to the documentation and see it's very nice documentation, well written. It's pretty self-explanatory how to do that if you want to use the library. So let's dive into how do we actually write migrations. So as you see, the structure of migrations is very simple. You have a version, you have title, and then you have extension. So let's look at the example here. So it says one initialize schema down SQL and up SQL. So up migration will actually do the changes to the database and down migration will reverse the changes that were done by the up command. And here is the version number of the database. So for example, if I do a down migration here, it will again be on the version first. If there will be a version three and I would run a down migration of the version three, it will reverse the changes that were done with the third up migration and it would be back on version two of the database. And important thing to notice here is that the version number just has to be incremented. It's an integer that has to be incremented. It doesn't matter if you do timestamps or version numbers. I personally like version numbers, but you can do whatever you like. It's very important just to increment them. So imagine you have a project like this. You have the database, you have migrations, you have client and API. Those two folders are empty just because, you know, it's an example project for you to understand that that could be a, a project structure that you're using. So you have a Docker Compose file, of course, if there would be API and client, there would be more services, but for the just this tutorial, we are using only one service here, which is just starting the database. So we can go ahead and run the Docker Compose command. So let's say Docker Compose up the so as you can see, it just started the database. Uh, of course, it will do some more stuff if you just initialize this image, if you didn't have it before. But in my case, I already had it, so it, it was very quick. So if you look at this Docker Compose file, you can see that there is environmental variables, there is port mapping happening, there is a volume, and there is a build file. We can just dive into the build file here. It's just you know, copy base images Postgres, and then it's exposing the port. 
which we are mapping to here. That's the local port for the database. So let's try to log into the database here. I'm using the Postico client, but you can use whatever client you really like. So let's make a new favorite. Let's call it test DB. It doesn't really matter how you call it here. It's just a nickname. So host is local host and 7557 is a port because we specified here in the Docker compose file. And then we do Docker because it's specified here. Then password is Docker. And then the database is test DB as we specified it right here. So let's connect. Okay. And we connected to the database here. Now let's try to do some migrations. So let's first create a migration called create table. So the version is one because it's the first migration. We just say create user table dot up dot SQL. And then we have to do a reverse migration. So create user table dot down dot SQL. So in up migration, we just want to say create table users. And then we say name varchar 50. And then in the reverse migration, we just have to delete this table because it's reversing the changes. So drop table users. And then let's create another migration, which we'll call add email to users. So it will just add and call email to the user. So alter table users. And add column email varchar 50. And then we have to do a reverse migration, which is add email to users down SQL. Then we just have to alter table and say drop column email. So now we can try to run the migration. Let's go to the Golang migration package here and find the Docker command that we want to use in order to run it. So here it is. So let's say, okay, so Docker run. Now we have to mount the migrations folder that we just created here. We just have to figure out what's the path to it. So let's figure out real quick. Okay, that's the path. It has to be full path in your system. So let's say docker run v volume. And then we map it to migrations folder inside the container. Then we say network host. Then we're using migrate migrate uh, image here. If we go to docker hub. You can see that there is an image already uh, that you can use for migration tool. You don't really have to install any CLI tools or whatsoever on your local machine. That's the power of Docker here. So then you just say path migrations and that's just for the CLI tool to know where the migrations are located inside container. And then the database is we have to figure out what's the path to our database. So in, in the postico here, can just go in and copy the URL of the database. We have to put it into parentheses here because we have to disable SSL mode as well. You just say disable. And then you just say that you want to do an up migration. Also, you can do uh, up to, which will mean that it'll just up the version of the database by two. So up migration will run all of the migrations. So let's try that. Okay, so we see that create user table and add email to users was executed. Let's see how it looks like in the database. Okay, so we see that the email column was added. So we can start playing around with the database here. And by the way, I just noticed that I missed the users here in alter table column, uh, drop column email. So just add this. 
And if we go to the database and we see schema migrations, it says that the version of the database is two. Uh, the false means that it's not dirty. If there would be a uh, error with your migration, it would set the flag to true, the column to true, and then you would have to fix the database and force the version number. So let's try to down the version of the database. So as you can see, it executed the down command for add email to users. So let's go to the database here and refresh that. And you can see that there is no email column because we down the version by one and now it's at version one. If we down it one more time, then we see that there is no users columns anymore because it was down by version by one version again. And we can do the same with up command just up by one version, and then it will just create the users table without the email column. But if we do it one more time, the email column appears here. And you can do the down command without any flags which will just execute all the down migrations and there will be nothing in the database. So now we can actually create a separate container that will host our migrations and we will not have to mount it separately in the CLI. So let's go back to the project here and create a new folder. Let's call it migrator and then move the migrations to migrator and then create a new Docker file here. Then we can just say that from migrate, migrate, which is the base image that we're using from the Docker Hub here, we can just copy our migrations to migrations folder inside the Docker container. So migrations folder here to the Docker container. So let's try to build this image here. Let's go to Let's just build it here. So build T, which will give it a tag migrator and then this directory. So we have the image built. Now we can actually use the image in a way with Docker command. So we just go to remove the volume because we don't need it anymore. We already have it in the, um, in the container. And then we just say that we want to use migrator image that we already have in the system. And let's just say that we want to do an up migration. So as you can see, it just worked right here. So this way you can have the separate uh, container for just migrating. So I hope this video helped you and was useful to you. If you like the video, just give it a thumbs up. And also if you like this format of videos, just subscribe to my channel because I will be releasing a bunch of them in the future. So see you next time.